We've been converting this Mercedes Verio for the best part of two years now. Now that we're actually using the bus, we've realised that some things aren't quite right and they need to be changed. When we started our van build, one of the things that we put in was the underslung water tank and actually it served us pretty well, but it is massive. Now at the time, people did say, it's too low to the ground, you're going to hit it. Um, touch wood, we haven't hit it and caused major damage to it. We did catch it going in to a farm where we went basically down a hump and then we got up a very steep hump that knocked the tap but over 2000 miles we haven't really had a problem however recently seen a couple of varios and larger vans break down needed to be hauled on to a tow vehicle and we could see that that actually probably will cause a problem not that we're wishing a breakdown on ourselves the other thing that we've noticed is actually 250 liters which is 250 kilograms in weight is actually too much for what we need we figured out that we need roughly 150 100 and 80 litres to last us the three to four days so we know that we can actually replace this with a smaller tank we're not going to replace it with any tank though we've had one designed to work with the mounting point and the chassis rails that actually run through our bus someone is very excited here it is it's not me is it it's the second one that we've had who wants to buy a rolled one do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah <laughs> The unveiling. It's blue. Oh, is it like Christmas morning now? Mm, Christmas morning is probably cheaper. Yeah, this is more worrying though because we're, we're like, oh, I know, what if it's wrong? This, this is the thing that men's screens are made of. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. Look at the shape of it. It's like the Tetris, like, <laughs> or Tetris cube thing. And one of the things I did mention a couple of years ago is that this tank, should we come to need to do it, should be able to be dropped down and reinstalled. So that's one thing that we can at least test today to see if I was uh, right in that regard. All right, so I've loosened these straps off. They were holding it on pretty well. But I also under here have, oh, apart from my mark all over my nose, under here I also have 350 mil box section holding it up too. So I did that bound brace. Lots of people just put it on with this. But I wanted both. And it, when it when it's on here, this 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 never moved. So it still isn't, even though I've detached those. So we'll take that off now and then we should be able to slide the existing tank out. And this is the existing ground clearance we were working with. What we're going to try and do is make full use of all of this space that's under here. We have the sway bar, the leaf spring uh, connector across the back there that we're going to need to work around and these beams here that are seam welded and bolted in that we put in a couple of years ago and we want to make use of those because they're nice and strong. This clever Herbert's even replicated it but put in the bars on the top which we think really clever. Well we costed up basically the difference between finding a tank that would fit between the rails of which we only managed to find a couple and they were only 70 litre tank versus getting the tank made up to work with the structure that we've got there and this came out marginally cheaper albeit not cheap water tanks are unfortunately are not cheap with the ongoing economic whatnot that's occurring all around the world i think something we've had designed would have been about half the price had we bought it a couple of years ago so we're, we're going through the pain of that to try and put this correct and right. The first step was to take off the filler point and all the ancillaries that were in the top of the tank. Thankfully, the hatch came into good use here. We then removed the bars that are underneath, as well as the straps that hold it around. If you remember, we had two ways of mounting our tank because it was and is a heavy old beast. Hey, one large void now. Now whilst this is out actually, I'm going to just take a few minutes to just do some stuff on my diesel heater. One thing I've not done yet, which I should have done literally two years ago, is run the inlet up into the bus. So what I'm going to do actually is take it over the rail and run it up in to the garage area so it can draw in the, the air from there. I did go back through my last video, have a look at the comments and some of the things that people provided feedback on. One of them was the fact that the tank might have chafed on the straps. It didn't, by the way, and hasn't. But 
you know, I've only driven it a couple of thousand miles because it simply just doesn't move. But I thought I may as well make a little upgrade. And I've had, I'm adding some of this self amalgamating tape around the bars. So this stuff's waterproof, it binds to itself. And it'll also provide a bit of grip and a little bit of friction protection on the bars themselves. Even though the tank straw on the original tank worked a treat, I decided to move the inlet around to the side for a more conventional exit point for the water. You've seen the structure that's underneath, and this is the new tank. Now, the tank is made of like high grade, water safe plastic. Uh, and it's all been welded inside and out and you can see that it's create um, had it built to fit around the structure that we've got there i've got a 40 mil spigot here for my inlet got my gauge which i've gone for a good gauge this time which has got more uh, stems on it they're called basically so it doesn't just drop from 27 percent down to 17 percent. this should be a bit more gradual on the top here i'm gonna need to fit a vent here and a vent here because of the two little component compartments i've got here down here i've got my drain and over here i have my outlet and they're all half inch fittings um, and i'm just gonna hook those all up now you can see how it, how we're gonna put it together but yeah i'm really pleased with how this looks i just hope that it fits so if you were to put one in your bus or your Vario, you could actually, um, let me just get this right. So you could actually, because you won't have this here as a support, you could actually have one that's this shaped and then came all the way along here and then went in underneath and went a bit further actually. I reckon you could probably get a 220 litre tank under there um, for the same height as this. This is gonna be 180 litres all told. So, not a small tank um, by any means, but we are losing 70 litres, which we've already established we don't need. You can tell I'm nervous about that. And I'm gonna wind some PTFT tape around these, the opposite direction that the thread goes in, and all of the fittings on the whole tank. Let's see if she fits. Let's see if she fits. I've not fitted. Now, on my original tank, I fitted some heat pads on the bottom. And I think they're only about sort of 30 to 50 watts in combination because I put two on there. Uh, since then, tank blankets have become a thing over here in the UK because these are from America. And this one here is the 150 watt version. Yeah, the 150 watt version. I'm going to attach this to my tank. So what we're going to do is make sure that we add a little bit more protection to the in the outlet end where the water's going to come out. So I'm waiting for something to arrive for that, but I've added the wiring for it. And I'll show you how we properly winterized our tanks when that arrives. Okay, so this is what you've got underneath. You've basically got the heated element and a big sticky pad. You just apply it to the tank, like I said, on the end where your outlet is. Now we're ready to see if it fits. Now we're ready. I'll be a damn bummer if it does now after I've just put all that on there. Let's see. First thing I did was make sure that the tank was in the right position and propped it up with a jack some axle stands and some trusty paint pots. I did this because I wanted to make sure that the spacing was equal all the way around because in the future we're going to be winterizing it and then I made sure that the spigot was attached before then doing the galvanized stripping from front to back and then side to side. Oh packing up for today but well, that's a really good start. Uh, like any job to kind of get it safe right and tight it just takes ages so that came off and went back on 
as I expected it should really. So that's on. I do need to cut off the excess now because obviously we've got about another 25 centimeter excess now because of the slack that's been taken up. And I need to put on the bars underneath as well. But I'll come back to you tomorrow and then I'm gonna show you, hopefully, the difference this has made. Get yeah, back at it. I don't mind saying to you, I am aching today from being crawling around on the floor. You know, hats off to anybody that has to do manual labor where they're on the ground all day. I don't know, like a professional mole person or professional worm or other professions like that because I am bruised to absolute whatever a polite way of putting it is. I'm just cutting down the pipe that I put over my threaded bar, making it shorter and then putting the three bars underneath and I'm going to get back under and re-nip up and tighten this banded strap in. I know it's not going to go anywhere because I've got it fixed then basically 14 different points on the bus remember things may be hotter than they first seem especially when they fall on your chest but their stumps are off now nice and neat less chance of someone scagging themselves when they get underneath and more ground clearing join me under my bus it's got to come to a point where i'm not gonna need to get under here anymore surely i thought i'd i thought i'd reach that point Crap, I'll just drop something. Honestly, if you drop something under here, it's the worst. I'm just wiring up the tank blanket. I'm just using some of these heat shrink connectors. I'll just drop one of them. Oh, I think they didn't wrong. So under here, for the time being, I'm just gonna cut this three mil wire. And I'm gonna connect it straight to the tank blanket. But I've left enough latency in the cable and length to allow me to run some self-regulating cable. And I'm gonna run that around the inlet pipe when that arrives. Basically what that does is it heats the pipe up, make sure that doesn't freeze. And then what I'm going to do inside is I'm gonna set my servo to trigger this all to come on at four degrees, but then the tank blanket itself looks after itself. So it will switch itself off and on as it sees fit based on uh, the temperature that it's also sensing. I like these, they're full of, um, so they shrink, but then they're full of glue. So they create a waterproof seal, which is very handy dandy. All right, so let's go and butt connect the sender and we can test it. Okay, let's put some water in and see if it leaks. It shouldn't do sure. Let's see. We're going to fill the tank and then leave it overnight to see what we get underneath. Put, put some pots underneath, check that it doesn't leak. I'll leave it pressurised, check nothing leaks. But overall, it's working quite well. About the same as it was before. You can see now. We've got plenty of headroom under here, plenty of ground clearance under here. It fits with our existing straps. I think if I were to do it again, I wouldn't do too much differently. Obviously I would get a tank that fits up between the rails first and foremost. I'd probably put the rails on top of my chassis rails just to give me that clearance and allow me to have a bit more of a regular shaped tank. Come on across here, we're gonna have a bumper. So the standard bumper does come down below to sit to about here and we're going to be making one of those with a tow bar and all of that good paraphernalia in the future you might be wondering why i've not wrapped it yet um i'm going for some heavier duty closed cell phone wrap we're not going anywhere super cold at the moment and the tight blanket can take care of down to minus 40 on its own anyway but we are going to want to make it more efficient for when we go to colder climbs i'll probably take it off and wrap it in the future but keep an eye out for winterization video because I am going to be doing that. Tank is in and it fits and we are relieved. It's the first thing that we've majorly changed in our build in over a hundred build videos that we've got here on YouTube. We're gonna have more in the future as well as our short-term and long-term travel. I hope you can join us for that. Until then guys, thanks for watching and take care.